right, whenever you are ready, Jennifer, go okay. ahead. I'm Jennifer Kortz, and I was diagnosed with inflammatory breast cancer in November of 2016. Oddly enough, when you Google my name, one of the most common questions is, is Jennifer Quartz still alive? That's a fair question. When we first told Jennifer's story six years ago, doctors realistically did not expect her to live that long. But her raw honesty, her, her anguish that she shared in that story really helped it go viral and connect with women everywhere. I remember him saying inflammatory breast cancer and all I could think about was what I Googled. <laughs> because what I Googled said that everybody dies, that nobody survives. And so I knew my fate right then. So right out of the gate when I was diagnosed, I was, you know, I, I don't even know how to, what word to put on just absolutely terrified and, um, confused and maybe angry and uh, depressed. I wouldn't be truthful to you or anybody else if I didn't say I was sad and maybe a little mad, but mostly sad. It looked really grim because um, my cancer had metastasized to my lymph nodes, which is characteristic of inflammatory breast cancer my liver, as well as my bones, and they estimated that I had um, three to six months. At the time, no one had really heard of inflammatory breast cancer. There's no lump, there's no tumor, mammograms cannot detect it, and doctors often mistake it for an infection or for something else. Her oncologist said, though, that a biopsy really is the only way to properly diagnose it. It's rare, Jennifer, most doctors won't necessarily even see a case in their career. I think where a lot of the diagnostic problem comes in is when you can't feel a mass. Right. You can't see it on mammogram, you know, right. because it doesn't act like regular breast cancer. Is there a typical demographic that, that you see more inflammatory breast cancer in? So it's generally women under 40, but it can be women in their 40s. It can be postmenopausal women as well. It's a slightly more common in African-American women. My sister said to me, in the very beginning, she said, you know, we're going we're gonna to get through this because love beats everything. And so we kind of came up with this family mantra that love is greater than cancer. And in fact, my sister got it tattooed on her arm. And um, I probably would have, too, if I felt like a tattoo was safe at the time. <laughs> about cancer much anymore. Uh, I just don't, but I still cry. I still lose sleep and I still get a lump in my throat when I think about those little beauties that I gave birth to ever having a day without me. Clearly that stops me in my tracks. It stops me in my tracks that my very best friend that I married and has sacrificed so much for me might have to raise them without me. That chokes me up, obviously. <laughs> Over time, I learned to live with a terminal illness as opposed to um, the way I looked at it in the beginning was I was dying from cancer. Now I look at it um, as I'm living with cancer. Right now, they, you know, they, they have told me um, I could look forward to maybe 10 years. Um, but of course, you know, I believe in miracles and, and um, I'm hoping for a lot longer to be with my, to be with my family.